All right. Hello. We are here to answer any questions that folks might have. Um, so I did get a couple while we were, uh, you know, in our video before. Um, I had some folks ask about some other seeds that they might be able to use for sprouts or microgreens. So um, pumpkin seeds you can certainly try. I have never tried them. But you, the most important thing you want to make sure of if you're buying seeds, especially at the grocery store, if you can't get to like a garden supply store, is you want to make sure they're not uh, roasted or anything like that. Um, so make sure that uh, anything you get is a raw seed and hasn't been messed with in any way. Um, so that's kind of the first thing to keep in mind. Um, I also saw some folks talking about scaling up your hydroponics and I am actually working on that right now. I'm playing with some aquarium filters I have sitting around. Um, there are projects on make already with different hydroponics projects that you can do. Um, I, um, thoroughly encourage you to do that because you can transform your basement or any kind of tight area that you have and really grow a lot of vegetables and a lot of food and you know, flowers. There's nothing wrong with flowers um, in a really small amount of space pretty easily. Um, I actually use the soda bottle um, method to start my seedlings because I am notorious for forgetting to go downstairs and water my plants. So if I know that I'm going to forget to water them, I may as well set up everything is a self-watering feeder so that I actually end up with things. So I actually start my seedlings in that and then I'll transfer them out later. Um, so it makes it really convenient. You don't end up losing your seedlings when they're um, at that early stage. Uh, I also forgot to mention for media for hydroponics, uh, people were asking about some of that. You can use things like sand, peat moss, people even use wood chip, folks use sawdust. You can try just about any material. Um, just be aware that pH does matter when you're working with hydroponics. And what I mean by that, guys, a little science lesson today, um, is if you have, um, oh, welcome Jackie uh, and uh, K Katerina, hello. Um, if you are, are using any kind of media that can be acidic, that can actually chemically burn the roots of your plant. So you wanna be really, really careful about doing that. Um, if you need to test the pH of your nutrient, you know, your compost tea, for example, if you're using that, or your media, one simple thing you can do is make your own pH indicator really easy to do. Get some red cabbage, boil it until you get that nice purple liquid, and it's actually uh, acid reactive. So if you put some of that purple um, juice into something that's acidic, like lemon juice or vinegar, it's gonna turn pink. And if you put it into something that's alkaline, like uh, milk or ammonia, it's going to turn green or blue. So if you are noticing that your plants are getting sick, that they're looking yellow or kind of getting brown spots or anything like that, one of the easiest things you can do is, especially in hydroponics, check your solution to see if it's become acidic. Um, you can check your soil the same way. Just take some soil, put it in, in, a, in a little jar, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Let it sit until the soil drops to the bottom and then test the water. Um, and truthfully, your own water might actually be a little bit too acidic for some plants. So if that happens, you can, um, you can affect that, you can change that. You can use things like baking soda and Epsom salts to try and soften your water a little bit if you need to. You can add a little lemon juice if you need to make it more acidic. So there's a lot that you can do to kind of kind of play with that. Um, all right, so any questions, folks? I'm here to answer your gardening questions as best as I can. Um, to answer any questions you might have about Victory Gardens. I didn't get to talk about them too, too much, um, but I actually, because I am fascinated by Victory Gardens just in general. I think there's such an ingenious way for people to feel really um, self-reliant, to feel really uh, patriotic, really motivated. I feel like it's a really calming thing to know that you're you're growing your own and you're safe. How long is the cabbage solution good for? If you put that in the fridge, uh, Karina, put the cabbage solution in the fridge, it lasts a really long time. I found one in the back of my fridge that was about a year old and it still worked. Um, by the way, that's just a fun experiment to do. Make some of that pH indicator, get out all kinds of different liquids from the fridge or from around the house and find out what's an acid, what's a base. You know, you can actually make a rainbow um, with purple in the center as your neutral at, at pH of seven, all the way up to a pH of one, really acidic, all the way down to something that's really alkaline and it's really fun to do and see if you can get that full rainbow effect in there. Um, so I encourage you to do that. It's one of my kids' favorite things to do. Anyway, Victory Gardens. Um, so I just think that they're a really smart idea. And I feel like right now, 
I think we all need to be getting our hands into the dirt and growing and making something new. So I have a couple of these, these uh, different, this is from the first time that our government kind of uh, promoted the idea of a victory garden or a war garden back uh, during the first world war. And uh, oh, here's a, this one's a classic. Okay, these images are all available for free through various um, museums and from the Smithsonian Archive. So what they did is they made all these pamphlets, lots of posters, and they gave out lots of information to people about like when to start your seeds and um, all that kinds of thing. And that continued and then came World War II, <laughs> you know, and we had things more like this, um, you know, that victory garden that you could participate in the war effort. Remember that in a lot of these situations, we were rationing vegetables, we were rationing flour, we were rationing food because it needed to go overseas to help our troops. And a lot of the commercial growers and farms were scaling up to be able to do that. So they were making crops that could be shipped, not crops that you could just, you know, maybe go and buy some broccoli. So Victory Gardens kind of filled that gap for a lot of people. Um, and so I just, I love the artwork that is associated with that effort. Um, and I would love if there are art, artsy people out there, because I am, I'm not much of an artist. I leave that to my sister. My sister, Jen, is like this amazing artist. She did all the, the art for me for my book. <laughs> um, this one, I like this, dig on for victory. Like really positive stuff. But um, if you are artsy, why don't, this is a great way to, uh, to get out there and have some fun, right? And create your own victory garden poster. I would love to see some artwork like that. I feel like we need that motivation right now. Um, so that's kind of a, a great project maybe to have some of those kids out there that are more artistic uh, do. Any questions? Any questions? I'm going to keep on bugging you to ask if there's questions. <laughs> um, let's see. Did I have any that I missed as we're going through? Um, I'm just taking a quick look here to see if I missed any questions. Um, I did have someone ask about when to remove, you know, if you're going to put um, plastic over your hydroponics or over your microgreens, you want to make sure that as soon as you see leaves coming up out of the ground that you uh, take or out of the soil, that you take that, that cover off because otherwise that warm, wet environment that helps seeds germinate and start growing can very quickly lead to mold and that will destroy everything that you've worked on. Um, so yeah, you want to give them air as soon as you can. Just keep them in a nice warm place with some light. Um, there was a discussion on YouTube, a couple of us, about um, eating you know, edible weeds. So that's another great way um, from a Victory Garden perspective. You know, things like dandelions and chickweed and, and purslane and things like this grow in a lot of areas. If you learn, um, and one person suggested they had an app that helped them identify different plants in their yard, you can actually find some of those things and add them to your salad. Um, I kind of just let chickweed take over a portion of my garden. And when I go and I harvest my lettuces, I just grab some chickweed for the salad too. There's no reason that you can't do that. It's not going to necessarily hurt anything, especially if it's not actually in your garden beds. If it's just lining in between, it's, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, Let's see, am I seeing any questions? The easiest things to grow. Um, part of that is you're gonna want to find for your state, usually through uh, public college, um, your cooperative extension. These were formed decades ago to assist farmers and to assist home growers to be able to grow their best crops. So depending on your state and depending on the weather in your area, that's gonna affect what grows the most easy uh, for you. Um, Usually things like lettuces are very simple, kale, Swiss chard, all those leafy greens, very easy to grow, but they do need to be started early in the season or in the fall. They do not like the, the heat of summer. It can make them bolt, gets, they get bitter, they put up flowering stalks and they're just kind of done. Um, things like cucumbers, squash, everybody has a neighbor. <laughs> at least when I was growing up, we were always the neighbor with the zucchini or the yellow squash. Um, summer squash are so easy to grow. You get a lot of squash. Um, oh, Jackie's, yeah, radishes. Radishes and all the root vegetables um, are great. Um, radishes, I always use a little bit of um, ash, wood ash from like, you know, fires or from uh, cleaning out the fireplace because it will stop any of the borers, any of the little insects that like to kind of get into radishes and some of your other root crops. So you might want to think about if you have access to mixing some of that into your soil. Turnips are great. Beets, 
beets are fantastic to grow and not hard to grow. And the nice thing about some of these, the tops of the plants are also a harvest. You can keep those beet greens and turnip greens and enjoy them as a, as a meal too. Radishes are great because they grow so fast, you can plant them in between other crops and get, get an extra harvest there. Peas are great. Beans are usually very easy to grow. Uh, winter squash are usually easy to grow. Melons, you have to keep watered, but you know they'll grow well for you. Things like corn can be a little tougher because you need a lot of space to grow enough corn. Um, and it can be really hard on your soil. It takes a lot of nitrogen out of your soil. So you wanna be a little careful about that. But tomatoes are of course a classic. Um, you're gonna need to help them because they want to be vines. They're actually a, a South American vine. Um, so, you know, they're gonna need some support, but I would say if you wanna just get started right away, get some root crops in, especially your radishes, beets, get some greens in, you could try spinach and lettuce and all these different things. And that's just a great place to start. And then, you know, think about what do we really eat? What does my family really like? Or, you know, if we can't find golden beets at the grocery store or you can't find pickling cucumbers and those are something that you really want, that's what you need to be starting for your garden because that's not something that you can get anywhere else. Um, any other questions? I don't know. I'm looking. I'm looking and seeing what we've got here. Um, let me think. Was there anything else that I wanted to? I kind of wrote down some little notes of like all the stuff I missed that I totally meant to say, you know. And of course, now I dropped my notes. They've gone somewhere. Um, <laughs> I uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something from it. Um, I'm hoping to maybe do another one a little bit later this year with some container gardening, um, some self-watering container gardening. So if you think that that would be fun, I, I think that that would be a really cool thing to talk about. Um, let's see, any other questions? Let's see. I don't think I missed any. I hope I didn't miss any questions that came in. Um, and I really encourage you, kids especially, grow your own food. It's really exciting to see your own food um, come out of the garden. It just tastes better, you know, it just tastes better. And there is some evidence that fresh, the fresher your food is, um, the more nutrition it has, and the healthier it is for you. So there's, there's always a good reason right there to go ahead and grow your own too. Um, anyone else? Okay, I think. I think we may be pretty good. Um, if you have questions later, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram as Kaleidoscope Sci. Um, my website uh, is Kaleidoscope Enrichment. Um, and my email address is there. I am always happy to answer questions. Um, please, if you are looking for other ideas, I, I know this is uncomfortable for me to even remind people, but I do have a book. Big Book of Maker Camp projects, over 100 different ideas in there to keep you busy. There's some really great um, uh, weather station stuff in there that would be perfect for this time of year too. And it's always fun to have in the garden. All right, I think it looks like we're done. And I am so thankful that you all came out today to all of our teachers and parents who are working with kids right now. Thank you for the amazing work you're doing to our healthcare workers on the front lines. Um, and, and, you know, keeping people healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the essential workers that are out there right now. Thank you for all that you're doing. Um, everybody stay safe, stay healthy. I will post all the instructions for today's projects. They'll be up in the library on makercamp.com. I just had some technical issues today and this week, so I didn't get them up quite yet, but I promise that they will. I also will have a extended project for hydroponics. If you are into computer programming and want to use some electronics, um, you can actually use a little board called a micro bit to track your garden or your hydroponics to make sure that they're, they're getting all that they need. Um, all right. I think that's just about it for today. I will see you all again soon. In fact, on Thursday night, I will be part of our um, Maker Camp hosts meet up and happy half hour. So join me then. Uh, keep on coming back. We have so many great workshops by so many amazing hosts and um, there's always something new to learn. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great afternoon.